Lisa Norman. My name is Benny Shakari. I'm the president of the Chamber of Commerce of the town of Hyderabad area. And um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight. And um, thanks to the candidates who are here. And we have uh, Peter Nagar, and that's free body. Peter over there, first time. And we have uh, John Strata. Schrader, and that's BBC, and Lisa, and Lisa, Leslie, Leslie Benny, with the red rice. Okay, this is the, the rules we have for tonight. The candidate will give in 10 minutes each for opening remarks to introduce themselves and their party. The second one, after this, Completed, we will accept questions from the floor, and we ask that no questions come through a phone or read from the phone. You have to ask the question yourself. Okay, each candidate will about two minutes maximum to answer any question. If a question is addressed to one of the candidates, once the response from that candidate, the another candidate will respond for two minutes too. And we ask the audience, please, no uh, old questions or say anything against the bodies. Just straight good question, please. Put the fruits and vegetables away. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to close in, uh, the candidate will receive three minutes to close remarks. Okay? And let's see, if you guys want to do a... Uh, Put a coin, or does it matter right. who's going to start? Right. Uh, so just, you can, you can choose. Uh, we'll, we'll give the moderator that power, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. The moderator's got power. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll start with you. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And if you want to come up, you could come up. Yeah, we'll. They say you think better when you're standing on your feet. I'm not sure about that. My name's Leslie Penny. I am a candidate for the Liberal Party of Canada. I am a born and raised Albertan with a brief stint in Ontario for one year after I graduated from university. I was an RN with a degree and I have done a number of different jobs. I tell people that when we moved to Barhead, I started one role as a nurse. I then changed jobs, I think, eight times as we changed and shuffled around in Alberta Health Services, but I never had to sell the house, although I did end up putting a lot of miles on a vehicle. Why am I running to be the MP from the Peace River Westlock riding into the federal government? I believe in what the Liberal Party stands for. I ran to begin with because I thought it is very important for people to have a choice. But the more I have been listening to people and some of the frustrations that people have, I also think that one of our problems in this problem province is that we're unbalanced. We've got liberal MPs, two in Edmonton and two in Calgary, but there isn't a liberal rural MP, and hasn't been for as, as long as I can remember. And I think we have to Think about what happens when we have a Liberal government without a rural Alberta voice. I think it would make a big difference. So that's one really, really good reason why you should vote for me. Because I want to represent this riding at the Liberal caucus. Some of the things that the Liberal Party has done in the past four years that I think are worth mentioning. We instituted a child tax credit which means that money comes back to families with children. It has lifted 300,000 children out of poverty. And one of the things that I believe very strongly about, because I was, in, as part of that nursing career, a public health nurse, it's so very, very important that we make sure that our children get the best possible start. I was reading an article, and this was about the states, but it also applies here. We can pay $100,000 to keep somebody in prison for a year, or we can spend a third of that 
on an early childhood intervention program that will help ready kids for school so that they can succeed. There isn't a level playing field when children start school. And we do have some programs to help get them started. And I know that's a provincial situation, but it also helps when the family has extra funds to buy some of the things that help to enrich a child's life. So that's one of the things I'm very proud of that the Liberal government did in their past four years. Another thing that happened that will help a lot of us is the fact that our income tax as a middle class was reduced. And again, when you give people more money in their pockets, and particularly that demographic, you put money into a local economy. Doesn't give you enough money to fly to, to Cuba, but it will maybe help you get, go downtown and, and buy a new pair of shoes or a new dress. And that helps our communities. That dollar goes around and around, and each time it's spent, the person who receives it will pay a certain amount of tax on that, and that is the basis for the programs that we supply as a federal government. One of the things that we will talk about tonight, I am just about positive, is what about the fact that we have a federal debt? And one of the things that contributes to the debt is when you spend more money than you bring in. This is a cyclical thing. Our economy is recovering from the, from the recession that impacted so many people. But it's not as healthy as it can be yet. And one of the ways that you can influence economy and help people back to work is to provide funding for things like the infrastructure that, first of all, keeps our economy moving. It helps our safety. It's interesting that we all, in every community I've ever been in, there's always something that needs fixing. So infrastructure money is part of that. Now some of that comes from the provinces, some of it comes from the federal government. We've talked about housing. Again, a lot of that lies in the realm of the municipalities and the, and the province. But there are ways that the federal government can help to encourage housing that people can afford. One of the things that I've been frustrated with, I'm also a town councillor in my spare time, and we will have a group of people come and they want to build housing. But they want to build it, and this is fine, they want to build it for the 55 pluses. Because the 55 pluses, for the most part, are easier to get along with and often pay their rent and take care of places. Families, they have a hard time finding a rental property if you have a, a dog or kids, or both, heaven forbid, it's harder to find housing. Now one of the great things, and we'll talk a little bit about how our donations to organizations can help. One of the other ways besides the government building, have any of you been part of a Habitat for Humanity project? I think this is one of the <coughs> greatest things. We had a project in Barhead and we decided after we'd done the Habitat project and built a swimming pool that we needed to take a break from asking people for much more. But again soon, I'm hoping that we will be able to not have just a duplex, but a fourplex. Because each time you do something, that helps to get more money into that program. And the thing that's wonderful about that is it does help people who are low income. They're, they may be a bit high, but it helps people have the pride of ownership. I'm also on the social housing committee from through the town, and keeping social housing in good shape has always been a challenge. So there's that aspect of it. The rural development, Western economic development, isn't a program that the Liberals invented, but is a program that we support that helps start new businesses. In our small communities, it's small business that provides jobs. Our Small business tax is the lowest in the G7. And that helps keep the businesses going. 
when we talk about debt, if you have a business and you want to expand it, sometimes you have to borrow money, you build and add on, hire new people, and there's progress that way. The government works a bit differently. It has what we call a gross domestic product, all of the stuff that we supply and provide. What you do is you compare the debt to that GDP. Right now it's at 30.9%. And that's coming down over the four years that the Liberals have been in power, and it was coming down when Stephen Harper was in power as well. It's interesting when you look at the history of that, we've had up to 50, higher 50 percents, and that didn't matter whether it was a conservative government or a, a liberal government. It depends on how the economy is going. So I don't lie awake at night worrying about debt. I'm more concerned about the fact that we invest in our people, in our structures, in our communities. And investment pays off. It pays off with jobs, it pays off with people who can afford things, it pays off to have healthier people. I probably will, I'm hoping somebody will ask a question about pharmacare because that's another thing I'm quite passionate about. There are many, many things that a government needs to do, and to do that, it needs money to do it. I don't question the fact that there are things that happen that we need to be questioning all the time. And I would certainly encourage you to communicate with either your MP or with the Minister of Finance when you've got a, a, something that's really bugging you, and they should get back to you. And if I'm your MP, if you have a problem, I would get back to you. So I'm hoping that when you go either to the advanced poll that starts tomorrow or to the poll on the 21st, that you will vote Liberal. And thank you very much for coming, and thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for putting this on. Thank you. <coughs> Peter, yeah, we'll give you a good chance. Yeah, thank you, Barry. Yeah, thanks again for everyone for showing up to hear what we have to say. Uh, you can't have democracy if you only know one side of the story. Uh, thanks, Barry, and the Chief of Commerce as well for hosting us. Uh, okay, I'm Peter Nygaard, I represent the Green Party, and hopefully you as well. Um, I'm a proud father of two young daughters, uh, uh, happily married. I was born in Fort McMurray, and uh, I have an Indigenous mother and a father of European descent. I'm a member of the Onion Lake Cree Nation, adhering to Treaty No. 6. I'm, I'm a plumber and gas fitter with my own company, and I'm an, uh, an avid outdoorsman and a subsistence hunter. I spent 10 years traveling around the planet with my wife on bicycles in order to gain an understanding of humanity and the world in which we live in. I think this experience uh, will be a great asset to somebody representing a people in a riding as big as this one uh, and to make sure that the voices are heard in Ottawa. I want the Indigenous people to know that I will fight for them in the House of Commons. I embrace all 46 articles of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I would move quickly to enact all the recommendations by the inquiry into the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and all the recommendations by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I want the farmers to know that I would fight for them in the House of Commons. Transnational corporations have systematically squeezed out family farms. Farmers are dependent on their seed, on the corporation's seeds and the corporation's chemicals in order to grow their crops. They've grown reliant on specific types of crops, flooding the market, not getting a fair value from their crops. I would see a, resi uh, a resurgence in family farms. We would support family farms and try to get farmers feeding locally, local communities. We would support the 200 kilometer diet and we would fund programs to, to share the knowledge of regenerative uh, practices in farming, to relinquish the reliance on the chemicals to grow food and the destructive properties of the soil. So we want farmers to have a greater choice on what they can grow to feed the people. We want them to be able to keep their own seed and share that seed with other farmers. We would invest $2.5 million per year 
into a land and quota trust program and farming apprenticeship programs to expand local small-scale agriculture and help new farmers get started. I know it is not easy to get into the farming industry now because it is an industrial practice. And in order to get into it, you need to have a huge capital on your side. And so new farmers can't do it. They can't survive. We would set the target to replace a third of Canada's food imports with domestic production, increasing regional food self-reliance and returning 15 billion food dollars back into our economy. We would see more ranchers, more farmers with the same amount of food. This would mean less waste. In the industrial agriculture practice, we waste 30 to 50 percent of our food. That is not only a waste for people that need to, to eat that product, but also a waste for the income that the farmers could be getting for that product. We would have the farming industry more efficient, and we would see that they get a fair share of the domestic dollar, as well as keeping their farms open for export market as well. If you have a variety or a diversity in your crop, that means you have more chances to get your product into the market. We would negotiate with the supermarkets to keep some shelf space for local farmers to ensure that they get their chance for local production and locals to be buying their food. I would definitely, and I know a lot of other families that would support locally if given the chance. I want the oil and gas workers to know that I will fight for them in the House of Commons. 62,000 people work, worked in the oil and gas sector nationally in 2018. In 2017, 268,000 people were already employed in the clean energy sector. That doesn't include the 436,000 jobs in the energy efficiency sector. Projections for future jobs in energy efficiency retrofits at 4 million. At the height of oil sands production, it contributed to less than 3% of Canada's GDP. The Green Party would see a shift in our oil resource exploitation into manufactured goods, goods that can be transported safely, goods that fetch a higher and more stable uh, value on the market, and employ more people in a sustainable way. Oil can be used for many different things. The world is going away from burning it. We are seeing many people, many countries divest from the oil sands. And not only that, but the economic uh, global market is shaky. Trading partners, long-standing trading partners are starting to split. It is an unstable market. We need to diversify in order to be resilient. We need to be prepared for instability. And to do that, we need to diversify our economy. We shouldn't be sending off raw materials and buying back high value goods from other countries. We can be manufacturing those goods here and shipping them to other countries and getting more profit from our oil. I want everyone to know that I recognize their right to live in a healthy environment. And I will fight for that right in the House of Commons. Since producing and burning fossil fuels is the largest source of emissions, we need to retool society to run on non-polluting renewable energy sources. This is entirely possible, according to the studies by the Stanford University researchers and the Deep Carbonization Pathways Project. We would implement a major ramp-up of renewable electricity. By 2030, 100% of Canada's electricity will come from renewable sources. We'll implement a national electricity grid strategy to allow clean energy to flow across the entire nation. We'd launch a massive energy efficiency retrofit of residential, commercial, and institutional buildings. The Green Party would see people working. That is an economic opportunity that we, we can't miss. We look to where the puck is heading, and we want to be prepared. So we want people to be working in fields that will prepare us for the instability in the future. We don't, I don't want to see people relying on the boom-bust cycle anymore. I want to stabilize the economy. I want to help the people to, to feel secure in their jobs. The Green Party will offer job guarantees, income protection, 
and retraining and resettlement if need be during this transition period. It, of course, won't happen overnight. We need a plan, and the Green Party has come up with that plan. For years, we've been working on this, and we've had it fully costed by the Parliamentary Budget Office. We're the only party to be fiscally responsible in this way. We have the plan, and we, have, and we know how we can implement it. We know where the funds are coming from, and we know how much it will cost to make it happen. The Green Party advocates healthy living. We would see a national health care program, including pharmacare, thank you, Leslie, that would take the burden of health care off, off of the citizens. We have enough money to make this happen. It's just been allocated in other fields. The Green Party would see it put back to the people so they don't have to worry about paying their monthly uh, health care insurance bill or providing themselves with the high-priced pharmaceuticals once they're diagnosed with something that needs a prescription. We would also abolish <coughs> tuition. The Green Party believes that the best investment is in our children and their education. In order to be resilient and be prepared for a changing global market in the future, we need a highly educated society. They are more productive and they can contribute more to the society. They are more resilient. We would put more people working in forestry as well. At the moment, we, we plant monoculture crops, not just in farming, but also tree farming. Those, those crops are more susceptible to disease and animals don't flourish in them. They aren't a good ecosystem and they, don't, uh, they fetch a low price on the market as well. We would see more people in forestry in order to create and produce higher value, uh, higher quality wood to create higher value items on the market as well. Uh, in short, a vote for the Green Party and a vote for me is a vote to be able to speak for everyone. The Green Party's policy allows me to work collaboratively with other parties. In the form of a minority government, which is most likely, the Greens and the NDP will hold the balance of power. I am able to work across party lines. I can't speak for the NDP. They're an old line party, and they must stick to their party lines. The Green Party is new. We think ahead. We think of the future. We need to work together to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. And now, um, we'll have John, and he's the uh, People Party of Canada. Thank you. Uh, can I stop back here? Those papers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. And uh, are we streaming online today, or are we streaming on online, or? Um, no. 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 Okay. So just ladies and gentlemen of the audience. <laughs> uh, it is my pleasure to be here today to share my vision for a better Canada to create a new hope for each and every one of you, a brighter future for your children and future generations. Your vote for the People's Party of Canada is the right choice for Canadian prosperity. As a born and raised Alberta rancher from Westlock County, It's just kind of dark back here. <laughs> here, let me put this forward. Oh, that's, that's better, thank you. Okay. As a born and raised Westlock County, Alberta rancher with oil patch experience in horizontal directional drilling, crude oil transport, and hydraulic fracturing, I am uniquely qualified among the candidates to best represent the citizens of East River Westlock. I understand the hard work and sacrifice so diligently committed to by middle income workers who make every challenging effort to build a better life for their families. My dedication is to make your lives more affordable so you can live better. Now, before I continue on with the rest of the speech, I see they've given us 10 minutes for the opening. So I'm going to pause and, and go over a few questions that they asked us at the Peace River School the other day and share a little bit about myself 
and I think it, it'll give you some insight in, into my personality. So they asked us, where is your favorite single location in the whole riding? And I answered Peace River. I, I lived there for a year from 2006 to 2007 and I hauled crude oil out of the Kadaw Lake and Seal Lake oil fields. And I just, every morning, I just found the natural beauty of Peace River to be amazing and, and breathtaking. What is my favorite place to eat in the whole riding? Well, I, I'm sorry, but it, it's, it's Ramsey's in Westlock. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the best pizza burgers in Canada. And what is my best qualification for the job? It is my understanding of economic truth, as taught to us by Adam Smith, Frederick von Hayek, Ludwig von Mises, and many other economic legends that searched for the truth, and our society has not listened to their wisdom. We need to start listening. What is your party leader's name, and give us two reasons why they should be Prime Minister? My party leader is Maxime Bernier. He has the right platform, platform courage of conviction, as he is shown by building the PPC into a national force of reckon. He has the character to make bold decisions that will benefit all, of, all Canadians. If your government could do only one thing in the next four years, what would it be? For me, that is to eliminate corporate subsidies. I believe that is terrible for our democracy. It is unfair for business. What business needs is a level playing field with fair competition, and that will create lower prices and better products and services for consumers. What is your favorite dessert and why? <coughs> I, I, I like uh, frozen cherries with milk because they're delicious and healthy. <laughs> what do you think is the most single most important issue facing our electoral district and why? I, I said, um, a federal government that prevents economic development and transport of our natural resources is our single most important issue, especially in Alberta. And a PPC government is the only government that is willing to represent Albertans, get pipelines built across this country, and other capital infrastructure projects of national significance. If you had to vote for one of the other candidates, who would it be and why? And while I honestly do not support the platforms of, of any of the other candidates, um, Arnold's is the least harmful, so I would, I would vote for Arnold Pearson. It's, it's the least harmful of the others, but the PPC obviously has the best platform. <laughs> if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, beef tenderloin with gravy and mashed potatoes. <laughs> when you're driving around the riding, what sounds are in, in your vehicle? Uh, I would say, well, I like all kinds of music, um, as long as the, it's good. I, I also listen to audiobooks quite often, uh, particularly on economics. I listen to The Wealth of Nations, Human Action, etc. What do you think is the most important job of the federal government, and why? I believe the most important function of government is to respect the natural rights of its citizens and protect them from those who would do them harm. So, I'll continue with my speech now. Facing challenges that may seem insurmountable, Many in our society think that government has the solutions to all of life's problems. I am here to tell you that is not the case. I have spent my entire life absorbing economic theory into my understanding of our world. What we value is subjective based on individual preferences. Free individuals vote with our dollars to shape the world we live in. Whether your dreams 
are to travel by that house or simply to be a good soul and share your extra income with charitable causes. It is important to understand that taxes and government debt reduce your ability to exercise your impact on what kind of a world you want. Overreaching decisions by central planners have many unintended consequences that misallocate productive resources, thereby reducing the general welfare of society. We, as proud, strong, and free Canadians, cannot let socialist groupthink suffocate our productive capacity. It is diligent labour, wise capital allocation, and efficient production that will create a better future for all Canadians. A PPC government proposes to balance the federal budget within two years, put an end to government-backed environmental fear-mongering, simplify taxes by reducing personal income tax brackets from five to two, which will lower taxes for all Canadians with a 15% tax on incomes from fifteen to $100,000 and a flat 25% tax for all incomes over $100,000. Our plan will drive private sector job creation by lowering corporate and farm taxes to 10% and eliminating the unfair and destructive capital gains tax. We will make life more affordable for all by mandating the Bank of Canada to stop devaluing the Canadian dollar. This will benefit those on fixed incomes by allowing money to keep its purchasing power over time. You should not be forced to risk your earned money to try and keep pace with inflation. A stable currency is essential to the proper functioning of a market economy. Only a People's Party government will lead Canada towards unparalleled prosperity by unwavering commitment to the values of personal responsibility, individual freedom, respect, and fairness. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Now, we can get uh, questions from the candidate. Anybody like a question? Um, okay. We have uh, we have uh, an issue with the mic with the mics in here. So after the question, shut the mic off, and I'll put this mic on for them to answer. Oh, you, can, you guys want to take the mic? Hey, good for me. Good, good legs, strong yeah. legs. <laughs> that way, I don't have to go just wait. Go. Anybody have a question? James, go ahead. Uh, okay, so Peter, uh, well, not sure. Uh, nuclear power, what do you think? I haven't had that question before, thank you. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> The Green Party is in opposition to nuclear power, claimed to be clean, but uh, it takes decades to build a nuclear power reactor and less than a decade to go through the entire power supply. And then we're stuck with uh, radiated material to deal with, which we have no idea the consequences of and no idea what we should do with it. I think it's irresponsible to rely on a power source like that when we have nature to supply our power and all the technology is available to us today. Yeah, yeah they can all answer. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah thank you for very much. Let's go right up. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. This is uh, an issue of 
quite a bit of importance to me because we have seen no development of nuclear power in Canada for over 30 years, if I'm correct. My uh, grandfather was a nuclear physicist and he worked at the Chalk River Nuclear Power Plant in Ontario. And he also worked for the United States uh, Nuclear Agency in Los Alamos, New Mexico for 19 years. Um, I am strongly in favor of nuclear power if the free market would like to build it. Um, our government needs clear regulation that are straightforward and uh, understandable for companies that make application permits to build nuclear power plants. We need a process that a company could submit an application knowing ahead of time which uh, qualifications it needs to meet in order to build an infrastructure project like that and then the application can can be reviewed for environmental acceptable acceptableness and, and approved or denied with, within a few months it, it should not take multiple years or decades and then nothing ever happens uh, that's my position and uh, you, you know like uh, even at the worst nuclear disaster site in the world, Chernobyl, they have healthy wolves running around there right now, and the ecosystem is thriving because there's no humans allowed around there to hunt them. So the damage is overrated from those types of disasters, and also we have new technology coming with nuclear, with molten salt reactors and such, where a meltdown is uh, not possible. I do. Oh yes, we have to eat the mic. Here. I do not know what the Federal Liberal Party stand on nuclear energy is. We haven't talked about it, and I can't remember the last time we talked about it as far as a con our convention is concerned. So you get my personal opinion, and it's interesting. Sorry, that's. A real balance here, isn't it? Yes, that I can remember the discussions that went on when they were talking about putting a nuclear power plant in Peace River, so that they would it would supply power for the for the oil sands. And there was very good arguments in favor. And one of the very strong arguments in favor is, like so many other technologies, Canada is a world class developer of nuclear energy, and we have shipped that energy to other places. One of the problems we have with nuclear energy in Canada is that NIMBY problem, fine, build your power plant, but don't build it in my backyard. I don't want to be near it. And so that makes it really difficult. It has the possibility of providing, once it's built, the energy is clean, but as Mr. Magler has said that you still have to get rid of the spent uranium. It's the building of it and the mining of the uranium. And that uranium is getting harder and harder to find. But we do need plants to produce the isotopes we need for medical situations. So it's, I'm waffling because I really don't know where we should go with this one. Here. Good evening, thank you for coming out to express your views for each of your parties. It would be nice to see the other parties here too. Uh, I have two questions and I'll just hold one for now. Uh, we have had a large amount of discussion regarding pipelines. So are we going to be moving forward to start getting the pipelines to move the crew? Anybody? 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 I'll start. Okay, go ahead. That's all. Shut it off. That's right. You people, can, you people can see me if I sit down for a while because this is popping up and down. <laughs> okay. We know we have the Trans Mountain Pipeline. That, now, I know there's probably bets out there as to whether this one will actually get all the way up to Burnaby and that we'll be able to put Fitzman into it. But my bet is that it's going to happen. Now, 
One of the things, again, that we have to remember about our country is that we have provinces who have the rights to say no. And so sometimes that is exactly what happens. Now there are, I've been doing a little bit of research around the, the other pipeline that was, was canceled was the Northern Gateway. You're gonna get my personal opinion on this, but it, because it didn't go ahead, and because it didn't go ahead under a liberal government, I'm going to suggest that it would, we would be in line. I used to, I don't know if anybody shouted to radio, but I used to get really annoyed when people talked about the fact that we were bringing that pipeline to the coast of British Columbia. Where that terminal was going to be was halfway into the interior at Kitimat, along at the end of a very long channel and bringing super tankers in and out of that, that idea with the weather that they have and the pristine environment that is there, I think that was a poor idea. If we're going to build a pipeline, we've got a corridor. Have any of you ever driven to Prince Rupert? There's a rail line that goes along it. There's a highway that goes along it. If you have a pipeline along it as well, if there is a problem, you can get help there and get it cleaned up in record time rather than being in the middle of a forest somewhere. I believe that we should actually be shipping more of our natural gas, and that is one of the projects that I would certainly support. Natural gas is an extremely important product out of Alberta, and it, we know that there's a market for it. We just have to get that pipeline built. So, uh, I'm probably the only candidate here who's actually seen and, and touched crude oil and, and hauled it uh, through High Prairie as well. I, uh, I've unloaded it. Uh, uh, used to be Canadian crude separators um, just south of town here. Now it's called Torita. I've unloaded all over the place throughout our riding in Valley View, Slave Lake, all over. So a People's Party government is your only choice to get pipelines built in Canada, uh, well, particularly in Energy East. Um, Andrew Shear made it clear in, in the English debate uh, three, three nights ago that he will not use the House of Commons to force a uh, pipeline through Quebec. Uh, a People's Party government will. We will stand and we will vote for projects in our national interest, including pipelines. And that's something that the Conservatives have, have really let us down on over the years. And the Conservatives are largely responsible for why the environmental review process is so cumbersome for these companies that try to make applications to build pipelines. Uh, we need a streamlined environmental review process that focuses on results-based, measurable solutions, not pie-in-the-sky ideas that don't have any real on-the-ground impact. We need things that are measurable. If there's a problem, let's make it better. If there's no problem, get rid of the regulation and let's get our companies building these projects. There's been so many applications over the last few years and none of them have gotten built because of poor leadership from our federal government. We need MPs that will stand in the House of Commons and make a real difference. Thank you. First and foremost, the Green Party strongly supports human rights. The issue with the pipeline, the Trans Mountain expansion, was an issue of human rights. There are people and First Nations communities that are in opposition to it. If we begin to trample over human rights, where does it end? The Green Party stands for human rights and we offer alternatives. We offer a way out of the boom-bust cycle. We've thought about it for years. We've worked through collaboratively with all forms of government in order to come up with a plan. We've had it costed. We offer alternatives to people. We're offering job guarantees. We're offering income protection. We're offering retraining, resettlement, education to enter a new a new economy, a stable economy, one for the future, not one based on oil prices that fluctuate up and down. We want a stable economy to pass to our children. We want a green economy. Thank you. This gentleman.
gentleman had a second question, so we could probably I'll hear it. Let's go to people. Anybody <laughs> have a question? Okay. Well, thank you for the this is kind of a personal one for me, being an ex-military. I'm curious as to why our present government fought in the court system, taking rights away from the individuals that have gone overseas, and a lot of them did not return. I'm curious why. And why we have just gone and announced we're cutting the support to the military members again. Are we going to continue that underneath the other governments? Thank you. So this is one of the times when I wish we had the opportunity to know what questions were coming. Is this one I am again feeling a little bit inadequate in terms of the how muches and the who's and, and the always good question, the why's. And I can't give you a good answer. If I could come back and talk to you tomorrow, I could maybe, but but I have a I have a coffee friend that talks to us, my husband and I, a lot about the treatment that veterans get because he is one. And my understanding was that his difficulty isn't so much that there's been reductions, but sometimes it's really hard to get the money out of the government, and which is probably maybe the same thing. But if I were your MP, I certainly would be going into our cabinet and saying, we've got to do things better. Because we all so very much appreciate all of the sacrifices that our military have made at home, the work they do when we have disasters and the work they do abroad as far as peacekeeping is concerned. So I wish I could answer your question better, but I can't. But I would promise that it would be better. Okay, please. Thank you. So I, I personally appreciate the sacrifice of, of veterans. And um, I don't have any personal uh, policy insight into it, but I will vote for the People's Party platform for veterans' issues, and I will let everyone know that includes recognizing and respecting the unique sacrifices of those who have served in the Canadian Armed Forces, enshrining in legislation the country's obligations to our veterans in a military covenant between the government and those who serve in the Armed Forces, reinstate the Fair Disability Pension as previously provided for by the Pension Act. The pension will retroactively apply to 2006 and lump sum payments received since then will be treated as advance payments. Instigate an inline review of a new Veterans Charter including enhanced new Veterans Charter Act of 2011 to determine which policies and programs should be retained and we will simplify the system to make it easier to navigate and we will re-emphasize the legislative guarantee of the benefit of doubt standard under the Pension Act. I would also like to say that I strongly believe Canada needs to meet its NATO obligations of 2% of GDP in military spending as we have committed to by international treaty. We are not doing our part and we should be very thankful for the Americans for helping with our national defense. I don't think we should ever be disrespectful to Americans. We are under their nuclear umbrella and we should always respect that they are doing that for us. Uh, oddly enough, uh, the Green Party's platform has a few of the key points from the PPC platform as well. Uh, we've got seven points on veterans' issues. Uh, we honor veterans in the highest regard up with elders. Um, I'll just uh, name a few of the uh, policies in our platform. We provide support for all veterans, including disabled veterans, that allows them to live in dignity. We ensure that services to veterans and their family members are fully integrated and funded. 
who had launched a national re-examination of veterans' issues in December 2019 based on good faith engagement with military families and veterans, including issues relating to pensions and benefits. The goal is to identify necessary reforms and changes to programs to better meet veterans' needs. In the meantime, we would restore periodic payments to veterans at pre-2006 levels. Oh, there's one yeah. behind you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, without, because uh, I, I don't think there are any party lines, but uh, what are your thoughts on Alberta separation? The Green Party is committed to a unified Canada and uh, we, we think that we can move forward together uh, and become a greater nation. Well, as an Albertan first, I've, I've thought about this a lot over the course of my life and I'm sure many of you have as well when the reality of the situation is that we would be economically better off as either our own country or part of the United States, it really makes you wonder what we're getting out of Confederation. But I can tell you what I will do as a member of Parliament. I will make you proud of your country and your representative in Ottawa, and I will forever change what perspective is brought there from this writing. I, I don't see Arnold Pearson standing up in the House of Commons and expressing the opinions that I know Albertans care about. We need those opinions expressed in Ottawa and I'm willing to do that. And I want to make Canada the nation you will not want to leave. That's, that's what I really would, I, that's what I really would like. I grew up singing the national anthem, as I'm sure all of you did, and, and I want our country to be the best it can be. Thank you. As I mentioned at other forums, and I would be showing my age, and I don't mind. I graduated from high school the year that we celebrated our 100th anniversary, our centennial. And that was a wonderful time to be a Canadian. It was also a wonderful time to be an Alberta. And one of the things that we did during that time was we allowed and made it possible for particularly young people to go from one part of the country to another. One of the things that is a real problem in this country is it costs so much money to go across Canada, it's cheaper to go to Las Vegas. And if you ask a group of school children, how many have you been east of Manitoba, or maybe even east of Saskatchewan, I don't think you'll get as many answers as you would how many have been to Disneyland. So that's one of the ways that we need to knit our country together. We get, have to get to know each other. Now, we talk about separation, but you, if we become an independent nation, and if we thought we had difficulties getting pipelines through across provincial boundaries, just think the fun we'd have getting them across an international boundary. I still really believe that a lot of our problems in Alberta with the federal government would be at least helped, not necessarily solved completely. We need a voice from Alberta rural in the Liberal caucus because you can't, people say, well, they don't pay any attention to us. Well, I don't know what it would take a liberal government to do to get people in Alberta to say, you know, maybe we can't support you. As long as we are on the outside looking in, and whether we have a conservative government or whether we have a liberal government, there are problems both ways in terms of having our voice heard. But if we were able to, to elect, how about two or three rural, liberal members of parliament First of all, the shock would be incredible. 
but that person might even get a cabinet post. You know, they usually try to reward these people who, who do something outstanding. We need to be able to talk. Having lived across Canada all for a uh, good portion of my life and being relatively new to Alberta, uh, just uh, a couple of observations that I'm hearing from you as well. One is, I hate signing this way, but I'm going to say it anyway. What makes you think that um, a centralized government, one that gets most of their votes out of Ontario and Quebec, will listen to people from Alberta? Because when we look at the transfer payments, it says a totally different story. And sec the second part of that would be because you think that you can make a difference. I live in an area in Nova Scotia where the candidate was so for his uh, particular riding that when his uh, particular government wanted something that was not good for his area, he actually risked his own seat. Where it's an independent. Are you willing to do that? Because I know that when the Liberals did it back when they tried to get rid of the uh, GST, two of their guys from Ontario were basically almost kicked out of the party when they stood up against their own people. So I'm saying, are you willing to stand for this riding above every other riding? And how do you expect to get the rest of Canada to listen to you? system. It was set up in 1957 with good intentions to, to ensure that Canadians across the country had equal access to services and what is, has turned into is a welfare trap and an unfair system where you've got a situation where Quebec receives billions in transfers from Alberta this year, last year, the year before, for decades and they have social programs that we do not enjoy in Alberta such as subsidized daycare. This has got to stop. We need fairness in equalization. And we also need to uh, incentivize provinces that, that are receiving equalization to, in, to uh, have the right pro-growth st strategies that will help them become more productive and wealthy. If, if they want to have a socialist economy, they should not be allowed to receive equalization. They should have pro-growth strategies for their economy and the People's Party will immediately cut transfer payments uh, to a lower level and we will establish a parliamentary review committee to make recommendations on getting the process so it works for all provinces and stops hurting Albertans the most. Uh, the Green Party has a number of measures to ensure that everyone's voice is heard, including the voices of the people in Alberta. Uh, one is uh, electoral reform, which was promised to us by Pierre Trudeau. Pierre, sorry, Justin Trudeau, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he didn't uh, he didn't provide us with that, and that is the change from first past the post to proportional representation. That means when they're counting the votes. They don't declare the winner before it even reaches Alberta. That means that every vote counts. So they need to count every single vote before they can announce the winner and, they can, and before they can announce how many seats are allotted in the House of Commons. That would ensure that our voice is heard. Another thing is... Uh, okay. 
Yeah. We'll give you a chance to read back. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another good. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that happens after a while. I'm, we're starting to get maybe just a little bit giddy. This is, it's been an interesting tour. Okay. I'm going to talk about transfer payments for a minute. Because I knew that this was going to come up in, in some form, and I honestly didn't know how they establish how this works. Now, first of all, let's get rid of this idea that Alberta is sending money to Quebec. That is not the way it works. Surprise, surprise. Okay, how it is, is figured. We all pay the same federal income tax rate. It's, again, it's in terms of it's a 10% tax across the board. Every person in every province pays the same rate federally. What is different is the provincial tax that this, the provincial provinces establish. What happens is they take the average of the percentages of those provincial tax, and there's you get when you get an average, you have some that are above and some are below, and you're going to have to get a hook because I'm not going to stop talking until I'm finished. <laughs> okay, so as it turns out, interestingly enough, even with the times that we've had in Alberta, when you look at the amount of income tax with the lower provincial tax that we have, we still send and have money that goes to the federal government for all of the transfers that go from the federal government to the provinces. Transfer payment equalization is one of them. There are some monies that go for health and other programs. Okay. Why then are we so concerned if we took our income to the province of Quebec and paid the taxes that they pay plus a provincial sales tax, your taxes would double. That's one of the reasons, and I'm going to, okay, so. Later talk. Yeah. So, that is why we've got four richer provinces. Okay, anyway. Okay. I'll talk to anybody who's interested. Okay. I'll talk to anybody who's interested later. So, well, I believe hydro in, in Quebec and such is being left out of the equalization formula. And those kind of things need to change. And yes, it's federal taxes. It, but the problem is, Alberta is not getting the money back as Quebec is. So uh, that is is where we're having an issue. Just because we choose to have lower provincial taxes doesn't mean we should give more money to the other provinces. Um, Alberta has has a provincial debt that is growing at eight dollars per day. And we are giving Quebec, which has close to a balanced budget, uh, $10 million for the equalization system. That is not a fair, like, Alberta's debt is going up by $8 a day per person. It's not fair to be sending money to Ottawa and give those services to Quebec rather than have them brought back to Alberta. That's all. Rebut the rebuttal. Another question, please. Anybody? Okay. What are your guys' thoughts on um, social issues and identity politics? Now oh, that's going to need some explanation from my point of view. Can you can you elaborate just a little bit, please? Yeah. So more specifically, uh, people in minorities and uh, cultural differences. Diversities. Yeah, basically. Um, how do you parties attend uh, 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 attend to uh, address that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. One of the differences between Canada and our our compatriots to the south is that, and it's, it's, it's been criticized, and, and sometimes it's criticized for some reasons, but we have always said that, yes, you come to Canada, 
but you come and you don't have to give up who you are. We, everybody pays taxes and everybody um, has the same rights and privileges, particularly once you become a citizen. And so, do we want to make everybody the same? No. But we do need to ensure that everybody follows the rule of law. Now, I know there's been arguments about the fact that, well, some groups get to have their own way about things. We, I think some of us will remember the, the turban issue. You know, RCMP, they have to wear, you have to wear the hat with the RCMP. When it was important for somebody with their religious beliefs to wear a turban. So I think that we can accommodate some of those differences. What we are not going to accommodate is somebody, anybody, who wants to violate the law. And that is, so you can have your, your language and you have your culture, but you are still Canadian. Yeah, so um, you've heard a lot of in the news about that, and I'm sure it's being enforced at your school. Um, social issues, identity politics, um, transgender people, homosexuals, everybody deserves to be treated equally under the law, okay? The government should be blind when it is enforcing justice and law. Um, and we also, we cannot be subsidizing uh, other people's diversity, okay? If people want to act different or pretend they're something else, that is their choice, okay? But we as a society should not be funding it through the government. They can fund that themselves, and the same goes for cultural groups, uh, different ethnicities, a People's Party government will repeal Pierre Trudeau's official multiculturalism act. We will repeal it. And the government will stop funding other people's diversity. They can fund their own diversity with their own private money. We are the only party who has ever proposed this since Pierre Trudeau imposed that law on Canada. And we will get rid of it. We do not believe that that is an acceptable thing for the federal government to be doing. We will also respect everyone's freedom of expression in Canada. We will not be using human rights tribunals to go after people for expressing their opinions. The only reason Anybody should be punished for speech as if it is directing violence against another person. Otherwise, you should be free to say what you want in Canada. Thank you. There's some people who don't really get uh, The Green here. Party of Canada has a number of policies regarding uh, the politics for LGBTQ communities.